All right, guys, welcome back. We're on to the fourth process, genetic movement. Uh, genetic movement, or also known as genetic flow, is actually a really easy concept. Basically, the idea is, is if you have two different populations and individuals from this gene pool with its own unique genetic makeup come over into a different gene pool, by moving those genes from one area over to the other, you've now changed this gene pool. You've also changed this gene pool. And so by having both of these gene pools change, the frequencies are different. And now, bada ring, bada boom, you have evolution. So this picture shows it really nicely. You have this population where you haven't had any evolution. All the alleles are the same. They're producing red. And these are all the alleles that are producing blue. But now if some of the blue individuals come over to the red area, some of the red individuals go over to the blue area, you can see how that will change what genes are available inside this population. Like at that point, evolution has already happened because the frequency changes. So again, as long as these changes carry on to the next generation, then we've seen a change in the allele frequency or the, the change in the gene pool. And so evolution has occurred. And the best example is us humans. We, have, we see the most gene flow of any species on Earth because we travel all around it, right? We exist on all areas of the globe, including Antarctica, if you include the, the scientists out there. And so we get this, especially just in the last century, this incredible movement of genes from one area of the globe to another. Um, if you haven't watched 90 Day Fiance, just watch a couple episodes of that and you will see genes are flying and flowing everywhere. Uh, Nigerian American, uh, Brazilian American, uh, I think he's from like South Africa, uh, stuff I watch with my wife. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the whole idea is that by moving from one population to another population and, and, and then producing offspring, now the, the new gene pool is so different that there's been a significant change and that can lead to evolution. All right. Well, uh, that'll be it. This will be a really, really quick information at the bottom. Um, oh, please realize that gene flow, if it's consistently happening, can actually be something that slows down evolution. So that um, if you remember, small populations have an increased possibility of small random events creating big changes, but gene flow can neutralize that. So gene flow doesn't always make these changes go faster. Sometimes gene flow can actually slow them down. But it's just really important that whether those changes are sped up or slowed down, the change of speeding up or slowing down itself is a change in the gene pool and itself is a, a part of the evolutionary process. All right, get on this uh, pass off. It should be a real easy one for you. And I'll see you next time.